Creating Addicts, welcome to my living room and to this 10th episode of my creative podcast, I'm Selma. And here we will talk mainly about knitting, although there will be a little bit of sewing today as well. Um, I hope you're well. Um, this is the first episode that I will record in English, so I hope you will forgive me for any mistake I might make along the way. I'm not exactly used to publicly speaking in English, although we do speak English at home still. So I do have a bit of practice, but that's still a very, very different um, exercise, let's say. The weather here is very, very dark, so I hope that um, the light will stay good enough for me to keep filming today, because sometimes it can be really bad. Anyway, uh, I decided to start filming in, in, filming in English, sorry because um, I've been making or writing subtitles for my previous podcast and it's a hell lot of work which I unfortunately could not necessarily keep up with so I thought why not just try it in English we will see how it goes and if you like it please let me know so I can so I will keep doing that it's just much easier for me to actually record two and edit two episodes than just record and edit one in French and then subtitle it. So there you go. Hello, lovely English speaking people. We can start already with the finished objects. Um, that's how I usually do finished objects, um, working works in progress and then planned projects and then the rest. <laughs> So the first finished object is actually one which I had finished already before. I talked about it in my previous episode. Um, it's the Venture Hat by Rohanitz. Um, unfortunately, I'd lost it the next day after finishing it when we went to Ikea with my husband. And I was very upset about losing it. So I decided to actually order a second uh, skein of this bluish grayish greenish color um, it's my yak uh, baby yak medium the colorways are uh, daydream and midnight i think yes um so i ordered the second skein from loop london because it was not available anywhere in france the good thing is uh, doing it a second time has allowed me to recognize that I actually made a mistake the first time. I'm pretty sure, although I'm not 100% certain, that um, I didn't do the twisted ribbing, but just regular one one ribs. So, so this one si actually sits or holds better on my head. I didn't wash it after finishing it, so it's still a bit stiff, which makes me a bit like look a bit like a smurf. But I try to pull it down if I wear it and um, I will wash it at some point. It's just that I was too lazy lately to do that. So it's, it's a, bit, a bit weird, but it will be more supple after I wash it. It's still pretty ooh, rustic yarn. So although it's not, um, it's not scratchy at all, it's just it's just not super soft or anything, but I, I actually really like it. And so that way I could also practice my color work, you know. I really like what the inside looks like. It just looks almost as pretty as the outside, which is really cool. Of course, it's not supposed to be worn that way, but at least I know that it's nice inside as well, which is good. So there you go. It's fairly easy. I finished it again in just one day, so... As soon as you actually understand that you should well, understand or just manage to have one thread in each hand, you know, so one side, well, basically you knit English style for one color and continental for the second. So yeah, not nothing too complicated. The second finished object is the Paris and Berlin cowl by Jorge Locatelli that she wrote especially for the Berlin Knits Festival. The only downside of that is that there is no code on the... Well, it was included in the program which we got when we arrived at the festival, but there was no code to download a digital version online, which was a bit of a shame, but then no big deal either. So it's it's a quite long with 
yeah it's quite long with a with a tip you know than asymmetrical from there's a big difference in length between the front and the back but anyway so um, yeah you begin with uh, it's not plain stocking and stitch it's already a textured stitch up there and then you go on with a quilted stitch which looks really really nice and is actually much easier than it looks um, basically you bring you knit five stitches with the yarn in front of them and then in the next row you will pick up that that yarn that yeah you will pick up the yarn to knit it with the next stitch basically i don't know if i explain it really well but it ends up it ends up looking really really nice i didn't wash it either so it's a bit the the garter stitch on the bottom tends to curl a bit but that's no big deal i wore it the other day to go to the office um on my velib so that's the public bike bikes in paris and it's actually really nice because if you're wearing um, a top which has a bit of a v-neck or something then it really covers it well and you don't get any draft you can even pull it over your face i won't do that today because i'm wearing obviously bright lipstick so it wouldn't be a good idea but it's really nice and the yarn is um la bien aimée uh, merino singles in the colorway uh, paris and berlin as well it was a limited edition for the festival so it's a pretty special uh, cow to me. Yeah, I, I really like it. I like that it gives me a challenge, you know, always learning new stitches and stuff like that. Uh, that's all for the for the finished objects. Actually, I wanted to. Um, I actually started this one because I assumed that it would be fast and it took me less than a week and um, and I wanted to use some of the yarns which I already had in my stash but I wasn't too inspired even so that was it I went back to my what the fade um, so it's it's my first work in progress okay so here's the front I uh, really really like it still um, I'm getting more comfortable at brioche knitting although it was not well it was not something I had done before previously so so yeah but then after all this <laughs> it's getting better so I'm starting the second uh, change in colors which means that for now I have four skeins attached to the to the knitting itself which makes it a bit cumbersome to transport so i'm leaving it at home and keeping it for evenings but this week i went back to work and i was pretty tired so i uh, didn't have much energy to go on so but i will find a new pace you know next week and it should be better yeah because i have been off of work for five months and it's it's pretty hard to go back to it yeah um the second work in progress is actually not in progress at all because i had to frog it completely yesterday i had finished it's the i will show you it's the pavement sweater by um vera Bellimeki. and um yeah i really really like it and i had finished the color and the yoke and i was starting i was about to start on the body i had just finished the division and then i recounted my stitches and i recognized there was a mistake and it was visible and it was pretty hard to fix so i just did it and i fogged it so here's my sweater yeah it was very frustrating to be honest and last night i came back pretty late and i didn't well i i, I couldn't make it the way i wanted the, the casting on of the of the color so i just did a couple dozen uh stitches there and i will go on sometime probably tomorrow because we have our housewarming party tonight and i do have some stuff to do at home before it can actually happen so yeah that's uh, my uh, in progress not in progress sweater i sh i really really hope that i will be able to go on because i actually really like the yarn the way it looks it's it's yeah like the yarn i like the pullover but i just need time <laughs> more time and more focus 
Um, the last work in progress is actually a really easy one, which I just didn't have the energy to do this week. It's the um, booties that go with this kimono, which I knit like six months ago. Yeah, uh, well, it's going, it's supposed to be really fast, so I've only just done that, but it's a matter of uh, energy again. But I am confident I will be able to finish them soon enough. It's just booties after all for a baby so small feet so fast work or at least it should be um that's all for my works in progress i have uh, so many things which i actually want to do and which i plan to do in the future but then i've been wondering if it actually did make sense oh wait give me a second sorry i had to go because uh, my husband just came back from running and um, yeah, he just basically opened the door and yeah, so anyway, uh, done with the pause. What was I saying? Uh, yes, um, my future projects. I've decided to basically almost stop telling you anything which I plan to make in the future because I keep changing my mind anyway, so does it? I'm not sure it really makes sense. Um, the only thing which I will show you today is the mittens I plan on making very soon because I just bought the yarn for it and it should be a fast knit. It's the Puzzle Wood Mittens uh, by Ruth Warewai. I sure hope that I am not, um, that I'm pronouncing this right. Um, she's Canadian, I think. It's a pair of mittens which are which have two colors and a pretty nice, I don't know if it's color work, anyway, textured stitch, which should look really good with the yarns I've selected. It's uh, it's Le Petit Lump's Wool by Bichelieuche. Uh, it's a fairly recent uh, French, well, yeah, it's a French company. I think they're Danish, but they are in France, they're based in France. And this is Lump's Wool from Scotland. It's very sheepy wool, very rustic. I already love it. I think the textured stitch will look really nice with those two colors, the burgundy and the dark gray. Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, the pattern comes from the book Woods by Making Stories. It's uh, Verena Kors and Hannah-Lisa Haferkamp. Um, they are both Germans and knitters, and I really, really like what they show on um, Instagram, for example. I've been following them for quite some time, and I ordered lately their book. Um, it's 149 pages, so it's pretty thick, and it's full to the brim with lovely, lovely projects and beautiful pictures and very interesting interviews and um, background pieces so yeah the seen this color work sweater which i will show you as well which i found really amazing of course that will only come after i'm done with the with the other pullover which i started yeah it's it's really really nice and um yeah all the yarn they use comes from europe Europe if I'm not mistaken so it's I think it's pretty good I wouldn't say angle but it's a good commitment in my opinion because we don't know enough local and we don't use enough local wool I'm trying to be a bit more conscious about my yarn choices lately uh, which is why I don't knit with drops yarn um, although they are very very they have a really great range but yeah, I don't know about where well, about other countries but in France they're really cheap yarns so I can't help but wonder where it comes from and how it's actually produced you know I don't know I can't find the information anywhere so if you have it please let me know but in the meantime I still have to uh, Two balls of their yarn which I bought some time ago and didn't get to use yet so I won't throw it of course but you know, I will I don't think I will buy from them anytime soon yeah there's I love this sub pattern and there are also tutorials in the book for for example um, heel construction there's a sewing tutorial as well and there are always background pieces on the designers which I found really fun 
which I found really nice as well because um, I think we don't hear enough about the designers themselves, you know, particularly when we like what they're actually doing. Yeah. Um, so that was the only um, soon to happen future project. Um, I will show you what I bought recently. I received two things this week or last week. So that's the book, Woods, which I just showed you, and this lovely project bag by Hannah Lisa Haferkamp. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's beautiful with the soft um, burgundy fabric there and this chevron fabric and the linen inside. It has a small pocket and um, I actually don't know the English name for that, or I can't remember it right now, so I won't use it, but it has this inside. I think you're supposed to use it to put the thread through, you know, have your yarn come out and being be guided by that, but I don't really like that kind of things. Uh, somehow it feels like if you put your yarn cake in the bottom and put the the thread through, then it just tends to get stuck, you know, when you try to, when you pull on it to unroll it, I don't know. Uh, anyway, it has a lovely rose gold um, zipper with a small leather um, pull. I don't know. Um, I know that she offers to put something else or at least remove the, the leather if you don't want any on your project bag. Uh, it's really, really nice quality. The finishing is really good and I'm very happy about it. It fits perfectly in my bag and as well. It's also burgundy, which I have, which I have decided would be my uh, color for the winter in this year. Hence the color I chose for the mittens as well. Um, this week in Paris, there were two festivals um, related to creative arts. So the first one is CS7, Création et Savoir-Faire. It's a gigantic thing. It takes place at the Paris Expo. Um, and it's in a huge hall. There are 260 vendors, which are, of course, it covers all kinds of creative arts. So it's not only um, fiber arts, but they do have some nice stuff. I bought a couple, a couple. I bought some new badges um, for my badges collection, which is getting really, really out of hand lately, but who cares? Um, so I bought this one, which said Abonné à Netflix, so basically Netflix sub subscriber. Uh, I bought this one, which says Wait, I'm finishing my row. And this one, which says Knitting is not boring. Um, the, the company that sells them is, she's, they're called Lil Weasel. They are a um, local yarn store in the middle of Paris and they always have the nice, the funniest badges, you know. So I think every year basically I buy a couple from them. I also bought this because I had lost my um, ruler, meter thingy. And of course with any time that kind of thing happened, you buy a new one and that's when you find the old one. Well, anyway, I needed a new one because I really needed one that had both centimeters and inches. And this one does. And it's a drinking cat. That's it. Life. Yeah. And it's soft and bushy. It's just a gadget, but I needed something and that fit my need. So there you go. Um, I also bought this knitting pattern. I'm not a huge fan, as I've said already before, of um, paper knitting pattern or printed knitting patterns because they, I don't know, you can't really write on them and uh, it's not always the most convenient to transport, but this one has a small code in the bag to download the digital version uh, on Ravelry. So thank you, Maria Amelie. It's the, her latest um, sweater design. It's called Peonia. And so she's Maria Amelie Designs. I really like her patterns, generally speaking. And I've seen this one um, in real life by one of the testers um, on Wednesday when I went to the fair, to the expo. And I recognized that it looked really nice. So I thought, okay, why not? It's 
pretty big risk that she took because uh, making a printed pattern is more expensive than just the digital ones. Um, but this one is really nice printing quality, so I really don't regret. And also, I like supporting small, small. I like supporting designers, generally speaking. So why not? That's uh, where I stopped for knitting and uh, I bought a couple of other things for sewing because I invested in a new sewing machine. It's a Husqvarna Viking, 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 whatever. It's a Swedish brand. Uh, <laughs> I really like it. It's electronic. Of course, it's a pretty big financial investment, but then I thought it's sturdy. It's really good quality. So. I'll just do it because I was re really limited by the fact that mine was so old, temperamental. Anyway, now I have a go really good one. I won't show it to you right now because I didn't even unpack it yet, but I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. So I bought this uh, kit to sew a pouch with some Japanese fabric. It has basically everything in it. Um, it's linen with um, fireflies on it. I thought it was really nice and not too complicated a, a pattern either. Sorry, my neighbors upstairs are making some kind of mess. So it, maybe you will hear it, maybe not. We'll see that. Uh, the other thing I bought for sewing is a kit by Muna Saw, which has the pattern and all the material for uh, making these shorts. Uh, they say that it's level 3 out of 5, so maybe I will keep it for later when I'm a bit more confident with my sewing machine. But I really, really like the fabric and the, and the, the shorts as they were displayed on their, on their booth, so I thought why not? Yeah, and I bought two pieces of Japanese fabric. This one with the owls just had my name <laughs> all over it. And this one was just pretty. I'm not exactly sure yet what I will do with them, but I just really like them. You don't really need a reasonable reason to buy something, right? So that's all I bought at the festival, the first one, the big one. The second one is called La Grande Mercerie. Uh, a mercerie is a haberdashery, I think. It's so well, they're a self proclaimed slow DIY festival. They're, it's, it's actually really small. But uh, I thought I would go and take a look. It's the second edition, it's right in the center of Paris. And um, they had um, like a dozen vendors. There was some yarn, but there was mostly sewing equipment, like patterns and fabrics and that kind of things. So of course I had to leave with a tote bag, which is really nice, like on Mercerie. And it says creative and committed. That's all me. Yeah, I wouldn't say that I'm super committed, but I try to be a bit more mindful to as to where my things come from and how they're made, you know? The only thing I bought there, because I've decided to try and not to add too much to my stash, although there were some huge temptations, um, is a set um, of sewing kits. There is one for panties and one for a bra. It has um, lace and it's, it was beautiful and um, it's supposed not to be too complicated so I thought that way I would well it's for me but it's also not only for me you know my husband will enjoy it as well so maybe well maybe uh, join um, how can I say that um, business and leisure I don't know anyway I think it will be a lot of fun to sew and see the result you know so it's good practice generally speaking I like practicing um yeah that's all i did um yeah i know i have two more badges to show you because this one has been offered me by ricardo which has a podcast as well canary lotus i think he will start podcasting in english as well soon enough but anyway it's the undercover otter um 
logo. Spirit animal. Anyway, it's an otter wearing a Hannibal Lecter mask and a knitted cover on its back. So it has taken residence on this bag because they match the cover and the bag. And I really, really like it. <laughs> and there was this as well. I went for the first time to the Tricoté, so Knit Night at Montparnasse. Um, and one of the me members, participants, organizers, I don't know, had brought us um, those small badges that say Knitting Addict, Tricot Addict. And the name of the, of the Tricoté in there. The llama is just so funny. Yeah, it was a really, really nice attention there. Um, well, I think we've seen it all. Um, I hope you liked this first English episode. I actually had fun recording it, so <laughs> I hope you will enjoy it as well. Um, I think the next episode should come in about two weeks. So let me know in the comments if there is anything you would like me to cover or tell you about. Let me know what you're doing and yeah, basically anything. Um, I wish you a really, really nice end of the week and uh, until we meet again, enjoy your knitting!